All right, so today I want to talk about the so-called dinker ball python. And if you've been looking around, maybe on Morph Market, it kind of shows up as kind of a grayed out gene. And you're like, what in the world is this dinker ball python? And if you think about the genetic standpoint, as far as the dinker, it's you're thinking, you know, recessive, dominant, co-dominant, allelic, super. And there's all these different genetic terminologies. And dinker is actually none of the above and what it really is is it is a, it's a it's a normal ball python that we think has some potential to have some other unknown undiscovered gene is what it really is and you can get a lot of dinker ball pythons you know shipped in from africa really that's kind of the best source for dinker ball pythons is the african imports and a lot of people bring them in not really knowing if there's really something going on for example if you look at the yellow belly or the gravel or the asphalt all of them are really close to a normal ball python and when they brought those into the country you know they're they're pretty much you know advertise them as a dinker ball python until they're proven out and sure enough some of those make some amazing combos the yellow belly was really incredible you cross two of them together you get a completely white snake and some of those were selling for tens of thousands of dollars when they first came out you know this and you're pretty much right on the forefront of the discovery of the new genes from ball pythons if you're working with dinkers and some people say that you know 99% of the dinkers are not genetic so you can get something that has kind of a weird anomaly as far as the color and the pattern and a lot of people spend a lot of money especially in the beginning of the ball python craze when snakes were selling for you know twenty twenty five thousand dollars a piece everyone was gambling big time on these dinkers and they bring them in and if you think about the, the name Dinker, it's, it's, I don't know if you've heard this slang, you kind of dinking around with this project, and that's, you know, I think that's where the name comes from. It is a Dinker. You're just kind of playing around, seeing if you can prove out this genetic anomaly, and seeing if it's actually a new gene. And a lot of people, you know, they're, they really focus on some of these new projects, and instead of, you know, going for the money, you know, breeding the pides and the clowns and everything, they're going for, you know, something new. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of people that'll will kind of focus on dinkers on the side in addition to the rest of their ball python breeding operation you'll have the clowns and the pines and then you'll have this little project over on the side it is your dinker project and and I would say the the probably the best way to do it is is to breed a normal to another normal <laughs> that's really how you have to prove out a dinker you know I've had some some ball pythons in the past where I think they have something going on for example this ball python around my neck I think it's I would consider this kind of a dinker and when you think about dinkers you're you're talking about normal ball pythons it, if, if you know most people like with a pinstripe or a lemon blast any other gene you really can't say that it's a dinker really <laughs> when we're talking about dinker we're talking about a normal ball python that has some characteristic that is non-typical of the normal wild caught ball python and it, even in the normals there's a lot of variability so it really takes a trained eye to see the what a dinker is and for example this ball python right here if you compare it to other ball pythons this almost has more of a, a kind of a camouflage kind of a golden color it's it's almost like more of a khaki color as a matter of fact i have several normal ball pythons and i can pull those out and we can line this up next to those other ones and we'll see that it is definitely <laughs> look at this guy he definitely has a different color compared to <laughs> that's a crazy snake definitely has a different color compared to the normal wild type ball python and in a lot of these really i think really the potential in a dinker is if you see something in there and you think it's a new gene really what you probably should shoot for 
is the super form and 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 the super form you really want two copies of the gene so what you do is you take something like this you breed it to a normal or well what i've been doing is pretty much i breed i actually i actually bred this last year uh to another single gene animal half the babies were normal and out of those half there was none of them that looked like this so this year i'm actually breeding this girl to my bamboo so half the babies will come out uh as normals and if, if there is something in here you know there's there's a certain percentage of those normals that'll come out with a different color than the other ones so if half the babies are normal half of those normals should actually have a different color compared to the other half and that is kind of how you tell that kind of how you breed them out and really really the best way to do it is to breed it back to another normal or you know a single gene so if you took like a dinker and you bred it to like a five or six gene animal you'd never get another normal the odds are so low that you get a normal and that's not really what you want to do as far as proving out a dinker. As a matter of fact, this girl just laid eggs not too long ago and she is back on food. Look at how big and beefy she is. I mean, a, a, a ball python, when they lay eggs, they're super skinny and all it takes is a few really big rats and before you know it, they are back up to size. This girl almost looks like she's back up to breeding size. As a matter of fact, she ate so many rats, it almost looks like she's full of eggs again. It's pretty amazing. And sometimes they go right back on food after laying eggs and sometimes it takes a long time for them to go back on food. So what I want to do is I kind of want to show you the difference between this and some of my other normals. And sometimes it just it's a matter of lining up, you know, what you think is something unique in a normal and lining that up side by side with some of your other normals and to kind of see, you know, it's really hard to see, you know, just showing you the snake. It, it's really hard to see that there's something going on maybe with the snake. But if let me tell you, if you line this up next to some other normals, you'll definitely see a difference <laughs> so let me let me line this up next to a couple other normals and we'll check out the difference all right so take a look at this this is what I would consider you pretty much your typical normal as far as the color and the pattern I would say the patterns are a little bit uh, variable as far as normals but I would say this is pretty much your typical uh, color as far as a normal and if you look at this one over here this is the one I'm calling a dinker and you can see the color is definitely definitely a lot lighter who this one's this one's hissing too <laughs> this one this one actually just laid eggs she laid a big clutch of like 13 eggs and actually they both laid eggs they're really good breeders they're both back on food doing really well and you can definitely see there's a difference between the two this one actually has kind of an unusual pattern as well as a color so typically you know in your normal Normal ball python you have kind of this pattern right here which we call an alien head and the alien heads are really common for, for normal ball pythons and that one doesn't really have your typical alien head pattern and you'll see here this is kind of like an alien head here kind of like a one-eyed alien right here <laughs> this is kind of your typical normal ball python color and pattern pretty much more of a dark this one definitely looks like it's lighter like it's almost a desert khaki kind of a camo color and I don't know if you can pick that up on film but there's definitely a difference between the color and the pattern on this one as a matter of fact it almost seems like there's little highlights right in here so this is kind of what I'm calling a dinker <laughs> as far as a normal ball python and I think there's something in there what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can find one of the babies from this one that has kind of a similar color and a similar pattern and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to raise it up if hopefully it's a male <laughs> I want a male and I want to cross it back with this one and hopefully I can produce a super form of whatever that is and sometimes if you have two copies of the gene it is completely dramatic compared to like if you have one copy of the gene kind of like the yellow belly or the gravel if you have like a super gravel uh, ball python it is completely different than just a single gene gravel or asphalt or something like that so I'm kind of <laughs> kind of just kind of playing around just kind of dinking around with, with these normal ball pythons and we'll see actually what we get out of this dinker 
Okay, so there you have it. Now you know what a dinker ball python is. And one word of caution, a lot of times the hets can kind of fool you into thinking there's something else there. A lot of times, especially if you have like a het pied. <laughs> what is this crazy snake doing? If you if you have like if you have like a, a, what was I talking about? If you have like a het pied, a lot of times you'll see some really crazy colors and patterns on the snakes that you wouldn't see normally if you have for example, if you have a recessive ball python, like an albino, you breathe that to a normal, all the babies come out het for albino. And with albino, you really can't see any extra markers. You can't see any tracks on the belly or anything. But with some genes, you can actually see it. So for example, if you have a pied, pied, sometimes you'll actually have visible, visible markers as far as the hets on your ball pythons. You know, I, I actually had a het pied that kind of tricked me into thinking it was something else. And you know, I showed it to a bunch of people and they're like, I don't know, that is, I guarantee that is 100% head pied and het pines actually can have white coming up on the bellies you know a little bit like kind of flames coming up from the, from the belly and I can also have like black tracks down the belly as a matter of fact I've seen some people you know breed like a clown and a pied together and get head clown head pines and a lot of times with the double heads you can see some really crazy colors and patterns and, and you know just looking at those snakes you think ah that's a dinker there's something in there and, and really what it is is it's just the, the heterozygous form of the recessive gene kind of bleeding through and you can see it a little bit and it'll trick you into thinking there's something else in there. So that's kind of another word of warning. But if you're if you have a growing collection of ball pythons, I would highly recommend kind of kind of dabbling with some dinkers because you never know what you could come up with. And you know some of the stuff, you know, if you come up with the world's first you know, of some of these genes popping out, especially if you mix two together and you if you have a super form of a gene that has never been seen before and what you really want to do is you want to hold on to that and kind of promote that maybe on YouTube or Facebook and really get the word out that you have something new and then what you want to do is you want to take that new gene and you want to cross it into some of this other stuff like pastels and pinstripes clowns and pines and a whole bunch of stuff and then you can really prove the potential of your new gene as a matter of fact you can come up with your own name you can name that gene and you could be pretty much known for you know being the first person to actually work with that gene and that's how a lot of these genes come into existence a lot of people just kind of bring them out of a dinker and bring them to the market and it's it's pretty amazing some of the stuff that's just kind of pops out and people are you know almost become famous overnight for some of the stuff as a matter of fact I saw one guy at a show and and he actually had a dinker that he proved out and it was an interesting gene you could definitely tell something was there and he actually bred two together and he got the super form and he bred it through all the snakes and he was actually at the NARBC he's like I don't understand I have the only genes in the whole world and nobody's buying them and the reason nobody nobody's buying them because it's not really that impressive when you mix it with other genes so if you have a dinker maybe something like this and it's just a shade of, of, of color a little bit different you mix it with other stuff and, and the, you can see it's there but it doesn't really have any potential to really pop and impress people a lot of times the dinkers will die because you know nobody's really interested in, in in spending any kind of money on anything that doesn't really have a huge effect and then if you have something that has a really dramatic impressive sometimes even I've even seen like electric effect on some of these on some of these morphs when you breed in other stuff let me tell you that is the stuff that is really in high demand and those dinkers turn into some projects that really go ballistic so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you next time